paintless dent repair, you need to do consistently 500 a day. Does anybody have a plan, a roadmap, how they're gonna travel from $200 a day to $500 a day? How are we gonna do it, Bob? <laughs> I've already laid a base at home of, I mean, I detail for a lot of dealers and auctions, and I've already got a lot of them on the hook for the paintless dent repair, M mainly the auctions and one of the biggest dealers is Sundance. I don't know if you guys have heard of them or not. They advertise all over the country. But between the three auctions I've got and the dealer I've got, that puts me where I want to be. Let me stop you. So Bob Mackey, he's got a special situation. He's a detailer. He's successful already. And he's got a list of customers that said, Bob, go get trained in PDR. Go get good, and I'll give you the account. Correct? Yep. All right. So Bob's got a pretty visible line on his goals. What are we going to do back home to get to 500 a day? Um, right now I work for Blizia and they sublet all their stuff out to other PDR guys around town. So you're going to be doing used car reconditioning? Used car reconditioning. Okay, what state? Washington. Washington State. How many Lithia dealers are you going to be doing the recon for? Three or four. How many service drives are at those three or four dealers? Every dealer has a service drive. Yeah. How many customers are they going to see on the service drive a month? I, I can't tell you. A couple thousand? Yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> 2,000 times four service drives is 8,000 customers a day. Of those 8,000 customers a day, how many of those cars have a dent or a ding? Probably Almost every one of them. <laughs> let's go 100%. Yeah. But for our math, yeah. let's just go 60%. 60 percent. 60 percent of 8,000 is 4,800 cars have damage. Of the 4,800 customers that have damage, the service advisor is already walking the car to let Bob Mackey know, hey Bob, I just wanted to inform you, you've got some dents around the car, we didn't do it. Because mm -hmm. that's what they're doing. Yeah. CYA, cover your ass. Mm -hmm. But they're not taking advantage of the opportunity to upsell them by saying, hey, are you aware that Lithium Motors, we do paintless net repair here at the service drive? Our guarantee is perfection, guaranteed or no charge. It's $150 a panel. I saw two panels with dents. Did you catch this one? Oh, make that three panels. Instead of $450, we will do it for $399 today. Are you interested? Boom. I'm now 26 years in the business, and I was reflecting about what I did back in the day. Now, the market was different. The pricing was different, but the business is still the same. Customers didn't know what paintless dent repair was in, in 1993. Today, consumers generally know what it is. Certainly the dealers do, the rental car companies do, the insurance companies do. But I was thinking about, we're just going to go around the room, and nobody needs to disclose what they make now. You don't even have to answer. But what is the average income at this table? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys. Of the nine guys, thank you. Of the nine guys in the room, the average income would be what? What do you think per month the average income is? Depends on how long everybody's been. I mean, is everybody Throw out a number. off the ground or? I mean, 3,000. 3,000 a month? Uh, I'd say probably average, probably like 5,000. 5,000? 4. 4, so we're at 4 so far. Yeah, about 5. 5? Five. 5. About 4,000. 4,000. Treadwell? I'm, I'm making nothing right now. Okay, well, there's zero. Yeah. On average, there's around the table, probably 8. Okay. About 5. I'm. Somewhere between eight and ten right okay. now. We're going to go with five thousand bucks. How many work days are there in the month? Twenty-six. Are you guys all working twenty-six? Are you working Monday through twenty? Right, twenty because four. Twenty weeks. is Monday through Friday. And then you got some Saturdays. Days. There's twenty-four. Okay. So I'm going to just do some math here. You guys got days off. You ready? <laughs> five thousand dollars a month divided by twenty-four days means you guys are making. Not you guys. Collectively, as an average, if we're using that, 208 bucks a day. And I don't know if you guys have researched this or not, but the auctions, the auto auctions, the dealers are sending a lot of their cars to the auctions and getting them reconditioned at the auction. They're getting them detailed. They're getting the dents out. They're getting the windshields changed because it frees their guys up to concentrate on the cars they're selling. Yeah. So these auctions are a treasure trove for us to go in there and get in there. And up where I'm at, they're paying 125 a car, and you just go around the car, get wherever else you out. You can stay there seven days a week and knock dents out of cars. And that's where I'm heading. That's where I'm focusing on is, is the auctions, because 
you don't have to travel around town as much. There's less travel, and there's money. There's there's a thousand cars out there or more at these auctions just waiting to be. And there's you're a from Michigan, correct? Yeah. So explain to the guys because you know this. Explain to the guys in the room how to find the auction in the local towns, whether they're from uh, D.C., Baltimore, Florida. Texas. Well, how, how do you find it? They're all private auctions to the dealers only. So, I mean, if you're in with a dealer, you can ask the dealer where he sends his cars. And he's going to tell you where he's. And there's there's high end auctions and there's low end auctions. What would you refer uh, Mannheim? What would you call them? Who? Mannheim auctions. Mannheim, I mean, they're mid grade. I mean, they're, they're towards the higher end, but they're, they're still reconditioning cars for the dealers. So the dealers just. Anything going to the auction, the dealer don't want to touch. Because that's more money out of their pocket, mm -hmm. and their guys are not working on the cars they're selling, so they're shipping these off the auction, and the auction has full reign of what they do to that car, whether they have a detailed or or windshield or dents or whatever. So you go in there and you just go walk the lot and make your list and go into the manager and say, hey, these are the cars I found. He says, yeah, those are Fox Motors. Yeah, fix them. They want and how much fix. a car? Right now, the average up in where I'm at is anywhere from 100 to 125 a car. Let's just call it a hundred bucks a car. Yeah. How many cars do you need to do it in an auction to hit your five hundred dollar goal? Five. <laughs> Easy math, guys. Five cars. Five cars. And that's what I'm saying. Five cars. You'll you'll do you'll do ten cars a day in an auction. Let's just stick with five cars, because in the beginning, okay, what tool am I going to use? Exactly. How am I going to access it? God, that big golf ball is just a little tiny niblet, but I got to finish it off. You guys are going to want to do perfect work. You're not going to want to just get through the volume of cars leaving puddles of lows. Yeah. That's not rewarding. Uh, you're cheating your customer, you're cheating yourself. Push yourself and, and, and get to the finish line. Get those dents perfect. If you go to a dealership, you might hear 10 dealers a day you call on. You might hear how many no's? I hear a lot of no's, but the way I get into the dealers is I just tell them, do, give me one, I'll do it for free just to show you what I can do. And if it isn't as good as the guy you're using, I'm out. But if it's as good as the guy you're using or better, put me in the rotation. So I'm not trying to squeeze anybody out, I'm just trying to get in the door. I'm telling you, as soon as you do one for him, and he knows that you can do what you're doing, because he's got guys knocking on his door every day. Just like we get cell phone calls from people trying to sell us stuff we don't need, we're, we're ignoring them all, okay? But if you give him one for free and show him what you can do, you're on his radar. And the guy that's doing it for him, somewhere along the line, is going to let you in that door by screwing up, going on vacation, doing something, and once you're in the door, you're in. Nine no's, one yes. One yes does what for you? 600 a day. It gets you to your goal. <laughs> it does. You, you ask for referrals. Chuck, the used car manager who you're building a relationship. Hey, Chuck, what other friends you go bowling with uh, that uh, run dealerships that you might want to refer me to? You just gotta ask for the business. If you don't ask, you will not receive. And a lot of guys fumble, not in technically being able to do the work. I mean, when you detailed a car in the beginning, did you know how to use a polisher in all those compounds and get rid of all those swirl marks flawlessly? No. Did you burn through clear coat? Clear coat? I started on one stage enamel, so I was burning. <laughs> you're through. old. I was burning through everything. You touch a corner, it's gone. It's like, ah! <laughs> and your dad's hitting you in the head going, dude, I just told you to stay away from the corners. You know? <laughs> stay away from the edges, stay away from, you know. But, yeah, I learned trial and error. Practice makes? Perfect. Perfect. Are we trying to achieve fast repairs or quality repairs? Quality. If we get a no, what do we do? Come back us again tomorrow? Yep. You try to turn a no into a yes. You don't need many yeses to have a good, stable, core base of business. I started Ding King. I went to school August 93. I practiced September. I practiced October. I felt comfortable working on retail cars in November. At the end of October, I went to a local car wash called South Pacific Car Wash. I went into the uh, manager and he was a Hispanic guy, and I speak just a little bit of Spanish. I said, hola amigo, me llamo Tadeo. And he goes, hey gringo, I speak Spanish. I speak English. Mm -hmm. And we kind of chuckled back and forth. He goes, what are you selling me? I said, I'm here to show you how I can create a, a new revenue source for your car wash and detail department. What do you do? I do paintless net repair. Let me see it. You want to see it done? And I had a golf ball in a sock wrapped with uh, duct tape, so it held the golf ball in place. And I went, boom, right into the side of my door. 
I rolled down my window, I put down my window wedge, my window protector, slid my rod down there and proceeded to work out the deck. He said, all right, I get it, this is cool, uh, but what about my customers? Are you gonna offend them? I go, sir, I'm gonna make sure your customers are aware that you guys provide, provide high-end detailing and paintless deck repair. I'll sell your details for you. I'll be a customer service agent for you on the line. What's the split? I said, I'll give you 20% every Monday morning for the work that I perform here. He says, we got a deal on one condition. I pay you 80% on Monday morning. I want to collect the money, he said. I said, fine. I said, Krispy Greens and Vanilla Nut Coffee every Monday morning I do. <laughs> and that was it. A relationship started. I did $27,000 my first month in business, cherry picking door dicks. The dealer made over 5,000 bucks. I made about 22 grand. And I couldn't believe it. I mean, I'm thinking to myself, this is an incredible business. This is something that can be duplicated. So I started training people to work for me. And I was, you know, uh, gaining more experienced guys that wanted to come onto our team because we were growing. We had landed uh, Toyota certified used vehicles. And uh, we were working with that uh, program when it launched back in 93, 94. So it was a good time to be starting a, a, a reconditioning business. How many guys in here are going to be doing something more than just paintless net repair? What services? Detail, debt? Windshield replacement, windshield repair, ceramic coatings, detailing inside and out, and dents. Okay. Well, Pretty much the same thing. Uh, uh, wheel repair, uh, we get headlight restoration, uh, windshield repair. I'm going to also do detail, and I'm going to get trained on ceramic coating. Same yeah. Same thing. Yeah, totally. Everyone else, dent repair? <clears throat> so now, on, a, on the second note, I'm trying to phase a lot of that out and focus on dents. So I'm kind of, I've been detailing for 35 years, and I'm just, the workforce and everything is just driving me nuts, and I'm trying to phase out of it. Watch this, guys. So we have more detailers coming on board learning paintless net repair than ever before. Here's, here's, here's the sales pitch. So Bob, how long have you been doing detailing? 35 years. 35 years. What do you charge for complete detail? Inside and out, depending on the vehicle. Tri triple black uh, Suburban. 350 to 450 bucks. 400 bucks sound fair? Yeah. Did how, many, city? How, many, how many hours are you putting in that car? One guy. About six, six to eight hours, depending on how bad a condition it's in. Okay, seven hours a full day for 400 bucks is uh, 57 bucks an hour. Not bad, not bad. Pays the bills. Now if you did paintless net repair and you were proficient at it, like you are at detailing, how much an hour would you expect to make? I'd work four hours a day and make more money. How much more money? Twice the money. Twice the money half the time. with half the time. <laughs> this is what paintless net repair affords all of us. I mean, you guys, is it frustrating? Heck yes. If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. And not everybody's doing it. How many guys see a, a gas station and a mini market on every corner you go? How many dry cleaners are there? How many burger joints are there? How many the, detail shops are there? How many detail shops? I mean, there are but how many dead guys are there? <laughs> there's not enough. I mean, there's not enough of skilled technicians. We have a shortage in America of skilled technicians across all facets of, of industries, whether it's welders, plumbers, electricians, quality-minded dent guys that perform quality hail repair, um, body shop technicians, uh, mechanics. Nobody wants to do the hard, dirty work. You know, there's a lot more white-collar guys than blue-collar guys, and the guys coming out of college, you think they want to do manual labor? <coughs> Nobody can take away the skill sets that you're going to develop through the course of your painless net repair learning curve. Thinking offers everybody the ability to stay as long as they want uh, for training. They offer the ability to come back for advanced training and advanced workshops and certification. So take us up on it. There's eight campuses around the United States. You're from Michigan, so... St. Louis was the closest, but I mean talking to Mike and stuff. I've never been to California. I've been to St. Louis and I wasn't impressed with it. You know. so How do you like California? So far it's nice. I mean, I, I, I found a beach last night and it was closed. I couldn't figure that out. Oh, uh, yeah. Gotta wear sunscreen, right? 
<laughs> well, this is the thing. A little burnt my, yesterday. My whole life I've heard it never rains in Southern California. It's done nothing. You're going to get stuff. rain. I'm like, man, what is this? It must just be me. I just. No, it was here before you got was here. Was it? Too. Okay. We've had the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've had some odd weather. Yeah. We have. You know, it's, it's funny you, you told that car wash story because that's how I found out about paint set removal. I owned a car wash in Okemos, which is our Richie Rich area. And it was a full service wash where we vac it, do the windows, everything. I had six detail bays and, and uh, same thing. Scott Wicker came in and said, you know, hey, I got a way to, to uh, get you a little more money in your pocket. And it helps me at the same time. And he did the same thing. He showed me what he did. And I'm like, dude, that blows my mind. Why aren't I doing this? So I would line the customers up for him and they'd come in every Saturday. And he'd show up every Saturday to do whatever dents we had. And then when he was done, he'd go on with his day. And it generated me some new money, but that was back in 08, and it took me that long to get out here. To, wow. To organize the money. Too long. And get, it, it, you know, the economy was bad, and there wasn't the extra money to, to do it, you know, and, and it took a while to get, to get out here. But it was, it, was that, it was that good of a avenue that I, I, I've been trying to get out here for, what, 10 years, 11 years now. Welcome to California. Yeah, thanks. Does anybody have questions as it relates to their personal situation in, in business? Is there, would you say, because, uh, you know, back home uh, from the Pure Valley, so east of San Diego, it's, yep. it's like a smaller community. So there's one skill technician. There may be others, but there's just one skill technician. That's the gentleman that I'm going to be... Uh, teaming up with would you say it's always best just to have an, uh, have someone to learn from than just going in there trying to truck people burn bridges and trying to take over yeah I think you're gonna be an apprentice for a skilled technician and he's gonna give you the overflow work I'm taking it correct it, as long as you're honest with him mm -hmm. about what your intentions are I mean I'm always about being honest if you're gonna go there do the work for him, capture some revenue as you're building your skill sets and then go steal his business? No, that ain't cool. Yeah, exactly. That's not what I would do. Um, if you let him know, listen, I'm going to be going to school. After school, I'd like to work with you. I'll take some of your overflow work. I'll do it on a 50-50 commission split. But just know that eventually I'm going to be looking to build my own book of business outside of what you're giving me because I don't think you're going to be able to keep me busy. And just tell him up front what you're planning to do. Yeah, because right now he, you know, he says, you know, I have a lot of work. I need help. I have a lot of work. You know, trust me, the money's there. Good guy. Yeah, he, he sounds like a good guy and everything. He's teaching his son. He goes, I would teach you myself, but I already have my son. You know, I can't be making money and teaching two different people. No, that's I'm not asking for that. You know, I have my avenue of, of being taught. I'm going to to school. That's not what I need. I just need something steady, and I want to learn the tricks of the trade that schools may not be able to teach, but people in the outside industry with 13, 20 plus years can, you know, and he goes, yeah, that's fine because, and I told him, you know, I want to grow, you know, I want to, I want bigger, I want better, you know, I want more, you know, is that something that you'd be interested in as we grow together and you see what type of person I am, what type of work I do, you know, what, what goals do you have? So at that point, now I'm telling him, you know, I want to know what you want because it's either going to benefit me, we're going to grow together. Or like you said, you know, I'm going to be honest and at a point we'll part ways. But that's always something in the back of my mind, you know. Now, now is he in the, in the actual territory that you're going to be soliciting? Yes. Okay. Because my suggestion to you would be when you're done with this class, go home and try it for a month on your own and see what happens before you team up with somebody and voluntarily give up half your money. You see what I'm saying? Because you're going to walk out of the school with some knowledge that gives you an opportunity to just go your own avenue and stay away from his accounts. I mean, touch base with him and say, you know, I want to know where you're at so I don't, I don't go into your accounts and, and, and help him out that way because he's still going to give you some overflow. But to just go there and say, hey, I'm going to work with you and give me your overflow and then go from there, there's going to be a bridge burn and you guys are going to end up being, I, I've done it, I've done it many times, man, and you always end up overlapping each other and somebody's got to give, you know. Right. And with him being experienced in it and having the hold on things, you usually want to get that over. Dean King has just secured a relationship with Mobile Tech RX, and we've got six months of free services using their app. 
So instead of paying whatever it is they're going to charge you depending on what service you want, you can get it for free. So you're going to save on the program we're going to put forth, it's 100 bucks a month. So you're going to get $600 worth of estimating software for free. If you love it at the end of uh, that six months, which you're going to, you're going to want to renew directly with them. Veterans do we have using uh, their post 9-11 GI Bill or Voc Rehab? We got two, Val and Nick. Um, Nick, where are you from? Well, uh, Massachusetts. So Central, Central Mass. Mass. Do you have a lot of competition there for Total Recon Services? Not really. You're lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't found any. You know, in the, in the research, there's a couple detailers, but. There aren't that many people doing multiple services like that. I mean, it's very rare. Very rare. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate your guys' time, taking away from uh, the tools and pushing dents. I appreciate the, the, the feedback that you gave me, particularly what you said, and you, because I believe in scope and sequence of curriculum. We're building a curriculum out right now. We just landed a contract with the Department of Corrections to provide inmates that are coming out of prison with skilled trade training in painless net repair.